Do you know what tools every serious gardener swears by? In this video, I'm gonna give you all the essential tools I, a serious gardener, use in the garden. There's a lot to get through, so let's get into it. All under number one is a shovel and spade, long handles. These give you good leverage. A spade is best for digging and a shovel is best for moving stuff. You can dig with this, break through roots, break through tough ground. And this is mainly used for when you've got loose gravel or loose dirt that you wanna dig and move somewhere else. I like the long handles because it gives you good leverage, especially if you've got, say, a trailer and you want to reach down the back and get that manure or dirt into the garden bed. But it's also handy to have a spade or shovel like this, a nice short one for those short jobs, whether you're shoveling in a garden bed or from close proximity, getting nice and close. I don't have any specific brand, but get a good brand that's good quality, of course. You don't want it snapping in half. And I know you guys always tell me, Mark, you need to look after the handles on these things. Give them a good linseed oil and they will last a lot longer. This one here is a fiberglass type plastic handle that I've been trialing. It's, it's all right, but I think I prefer the good old wooden handles. They just seem tougher and better to dig with. Number two is the machete. This one here is my old army machete. And look, I used to use it to cut through Lantana and the jungle, but now, I use it to cut and push over banana trees. It really does come in handy for trimming banana plants or other soft tissue type foliage, but with the current crime wave here in Australia, it might be worth whacking this fella underneath the pillow. And speaking of army tools, this here is called an ET or an entrenching tool. Some say ET tool, which is incorrect because you're saying entrenching tool tool but you used to get that a lot in the military. Gone are the days where I would use this to dig a six foot trench with your hands bleeding at the end of it. That was tough. A fighting pit with this, yes, I've done it. But nowadays I use it in the garden. It's both a shovel, a pick. It's got that there, that there. You can shovel out, you can use it as a spade. It is a really great piece of kit. You can sometimes get these from army disposal stores, but you can also pick up just the generic ones, even at garden centers now, but make sure you get a really good quality one. Number four is secateurs or secateurs, however you want to say it. I like the powered ones because I've got a bit of a bung arm and it takes no effort after doing this for a long time, it gets pretty tedious and sore. But I also like these manual ones. Little ones, bigger ones, ones that have a ratchet on them, whatever you want, whatever brand. I'd recommend to get a good brand, of course, but these are totally worth it and necessary in the garden. Number five is the prong. You might have seen the live stream that I did with Peter, the inventor of the prong. I really do love this garden tool. I've been working with Peter for a number of years now. He's pushing 80, and uh, I know in that live stream, you would have seen that we discussed a little bit about the old needle uh, for the CV that uh, happened a, a, a few years back. Well, he had a bad reaction to that, and it stuffed his body up. Uh, consequently, he's been in hospital for the last couple of months, and uh, I kid you not, two months in hospital. He just got out, but in the meantime, he was running his prong business from his mobile phone, from his hospital bed. That's how uh, mad keen he is to keep this prong dream of his going, and for every household to own one. He has finally 
got the prong into the USA. So there's stock there now and there's stock, of course, in Australia. If you want to hear more of the backstory, go to that live stream that I was talking about. But what it, I wanted to say and what Peter wanted to, me to let you know was that these are now in country in Australia and in the US and are available. And the other thing that Peter wanted to say wasn't a plug on the tool. It was after his stint in hospital, and hopefully he doesn't have to go back anytime soon, he hasn't got a lot of time left, and he wanted me to say that what has kept him going over the last several years, he could have easily given up the ghost, but what has given him purpose in life is running this business and having something to do that he's passionate about. And so he's urging people, especially seniors, get passionate about something. It could be gardening, it could be running a business, it could be inventing something. Just be passionate about something and keep yourself active. And that, that's, what, that's his advice that he wanted me to give out today in this video. If you've got an orchard or fruit trees or indeed ornamentals, you want to saw, either a hand saw or a power saw or both. I love this thing here though. It is really easy to use and abuse with it. You can dig things in the ground. You're not supposed to, of course, but you can dig out stumps and roots and you can chop with one hand. And I've just used this for so many different things, steel, wood, whatever. And then of course, you've got these hand saws that don't need to be powered, but are very versatile and excellent on their own. This one here is a pretty cheap branded one. I know you can get some really expensive good hand saws. Some of my friends have told me that I've got to get hold of some of the really good upmarket branded ones. They last for years and are really exceptionally sharp. But yeah, this is all that I need. Speaking of fruit trees, I'm always expanding our orchard. One day I'm gonna run out of land, but I just can't help myself. And of course, you need to be able to dig a hole to plant a fruit tree. And I love one of these mattocks here, or a pick. Good exercise. I even like how it digs a jagged type of hole because it's not cylindrical. It won't train the roots to go around in circles. It's just a good way to dig. Number eight is alloy forged gardening tools. The little ones that you use to plot around the garden, so handy. They're made right here in Australia, Sydney in fact, and they're very comfortable and virtually indestructible. Did you know that they found one of these tools, well not these ones, but they found one of these trowels in a saltwater lake and they estimated it to be decades old and it was still usable. So if you're anything like me and tend to leave their tools lying around in the garden, these are the tools for you because they not only do the job and are extra strong and really good to use, but they will last a lifetime. One of the problems that I've heard from this company is that these tools are so good that you only ever need to buy them once. So the repeat business is a little bit difficult. I guess people could buy them for other people and they make a particularly good present. Check this out. You can buy a box like this and they're fairly reasonably priced as well. Open it up and it comes nicely presented. You've got the small trowel, the wider trowel and the two different types of, what is this? Not a head scratcher. Yes, he's, uh, garden forks. The other thing I wanted to say is if you follow me on Instagram, over this next week or so, I'll be giving away five, that's right, five boxes of these to ship anywhere around the world with your glove size. So follow me on Instagram, go there, and I'll let you know how you can enter the competition to win a box of these for Christmas. Number nine is a mulch fork. If you've got mulch in bulk, whether that be wood chip or this type of mulch mix, well then this is the only way you can move it. Too easy. Using a shovel, 
just won't cut it. Because a mulch fork like this enables you to penetrate and then lift out. Whew, great. You'll find a shovel won't penetrate and it won't move much either. A mulch fork is the only way to go. 10 is a box cutter. I use this for cutting boxes, opening boxes, especially plants and things that I order online. This is really handy. Plus, you can use it to graft plants and cut those stems into the shapes that you need so that you can grow bigger, better and stronger plants. Number 11 is a star picket remover. Have you ever tried to remove a star picket by hand? Not only gonna give yourself a hernia, trying to dig that thing out or lift it out, especially if it's in clay soil. This tool here allows me to take out stakes, which I use a lot, even wooden stakes this will work on with ease. And if you're putting in star pickets, number 12 is a sledgehammer, small and the big ones. I need to get a new big one because I snapped the handle off it. But two of them are very handy to have. In Oz, we call these a sledgy, and if you need to drive posts into the ground or just do a bicep workout, a sledge is your friend. Lucky 13 is wheelbarrows, carts and trailers. All extremely valuable tools to move things around in your garden. That trailer there has got full of manure at the moment. Woo wee! I tell you what, it's a bit stinky but I'm doing an experiment how long it'll take until I can't stand it any longer and get my shovel and start moving that into a better location. A large trailer is obviously to move larger things. Very handy for soil, going to landscape supplies companies, going and getting some manure from the local dairy. The cart is excellent for tying behind your lawnmower, makes it easier when you don't wanna push your wheelbarrow around. The wheelbarrow is diverse, it's easy to get around, it goes places where you can't drag a cart. Number 14 is a watering can, extremely important for a gardener for watering. This one here is a Hawes, H-A-W-S. I've always used plastic watering cans, you know, the cheap ones that you get from anywhere, and they just degrade and break. I tend to leave my watering cans out because I use them out in the garden. So I decided to buy one of these top notchy ones and I've never looked back. Absolutely unreal, great big top, easy to put the hose in, easy to fill up, nice and comfortable watering with it. There's nothing wrong with getting a cheap plastic watering can, but I would recommend one of these better, more expensive steel types. And speaking of watering or delivering liquids, spray bottles is number 15. You can get them large like this. You can get them small like this. Good for just watering seedlings. If you want a delicate bit of a spray of water to keep them going, or you could have a delivery system like this that connects to a hose and you can put your seaweed or plant tonics or whatever in this and then deliver it in bulk to your garden. Sometimes you might have a fruit tree that needs a bit of organic pest oil sprayed all over it. Well then these larger containers will save you a lot of time and are easier for better reach to deliver your organic bug mixes or fungicides where needed. I must admit I don't use these very often. In fact, I hardly ever spray anything in our garden, but it's good to have them. And staying on the water theme, number 16 is a retractable hose reel. Very essential. You can even daisy chain these. I've got another one down here. So if you need to water further than 30 meters, what you can do is put these two together and continue on. Hose link, these things, they never let you down. They're very good quality. And they also do other types of garden tools and sell other products as well. Go hit them up on their website. Worldwide, excellent Australian company, really great values. If you've been watching my videos for a while, you know that Hoselink and I get along very well. 17 is Devil 
garden stakes. Devil, because it's got a devil tail on here, makes it really sturdy and easy to push into the ground. One foot, one hand, whatever. Very good for holding up small plants like dwarf tomatoes or cucumbers, making a small trellis, capsicum, chili plants. You can't just buy them though. This one's a bit buggered, but this particular type is from my army days again. It's called a tax sign holder. A tactical number and sign used to go on here and you can swap them around. But when I left the military, I decided to use my collection for gardening. If you hunt hard enough, you might be able to find similar products online though. Who knows, maybe one day I might get some of these made up myself and offer them online. 18 is a scissors, very nimble. Easy to do those small trimmings, particularly on tomato plants. But it's also, of course, great for cutting twine, slicing through those potty mix bags, or anything else that you need to cut. And of course, I don't mean to rake over the obvious, but number 19 is a rake. Every garden needs a rake, especially if you've got bush turkeys. You're always cleaning up their mess. You can have a standard sized rake, you can get a really big rake if you've got a lot of yard, or you can use also one of these little rakes. I find this very handy for raking, even weed control in raised garden beds, but sometimes you just wanna get in to these tight little spaces and do a bit of raking. Handy to have. Forking heck, as my English friend would say. A garden fork, number 20, good number. Wish it was 20 again. This magnificent tool that I've had for years that is pretty bent and well used as you can see has a fiberglass handle this one very strong tines on it an extremely valuable tool to use for loosening soil weeding or just digging potatoes out lucky 21 is folding table or table folding if you're ever in the military you'd get that joke cots folding did you mean a stretcher? Anyway, I digress. Excellent for maneuverability around the garden. You can pot up anywhere you want. They're light, they fold away. You can transport them, put them in your cart. A stationary table is fine or a bench, but there are plenty of times when I just need a portable table to be able to do something around the garden or the orchard. And this is a really handy thing to have. They last forever, they're very good quality these days, and they fold away, as per the name. You can even use the table folding to help you with 22 composting. Compost bins, whichever one you want, plastic tumbler, metal tumbler, just a normal plastic bin composter, they're very good as well and cheap. This one here is called the Easy Composter, I'm still evaluating it, I will have a video out probably early next year on this and what I think of it. But this one here is Australian made. It's made up the Sunshine Coast at Coolum. But if you're a gardener, you really do need some way of making compost. And yes, you can make compost in just a simple pile, but a composting tool really is a fast and easy way to get into making compost because good compost really is an organic fertile base for a great garden. Sometimes as a gardener, you just have to step up to do a good job. And that's why number three is a step ladder or small ladder. I might be 6'1 and these bananas might be dwarf, but they're still bigger than I am. And without a little ladder, I wouldn't be able to get and do things that I wanna do. And if that means for breakfast, I can't reach my freshly squeezed orange juice, then I'm not happy. Number 24 is a garden mulcher or shredder. Coming at you live from the garden. Seriously, this is a great piece of kit. I use Hansa, Hansa because they are one of the best. Having a portable garden mulcher or even an electric shredder, they do sell the electric ones as well, in your garden, 
makes it so much easier to just process garden scraps, throw them in the compost, they break down easier. You can even just use them directly around your fruit trees or in the garden, even if they haven't been properly composted down. Reusing and recycling your garden waste is probably one of the easiest and most effective and cheapest ways that you can get nutrients back into your garden without having to buy it. 25 is a whipper snipper. Some people call it a weed whacker or a brush cutter. That's pretty formal, brush cutter. But of course, if you've got grass and especially raised garden beds or footpaths or whatever, you really do need one of these fantastic machines. I always say if only our veggies grew as fast as our weeds and grass do, because sometimes it feels like a full-time job keeping on top of them. But this does make life a lot easier than the old days, having to use one of those hand cutter things. I can imagine trying to do that near my raised garden beds. I think that would be pretty dangerous. 26 is mower. Most people just have a push mower or mowers like I've got here. Why do I have three ride-ons? It seems excess, I know. Well, this one here, the Toro, very good machine. I'll be doing a full review on it probably early next year, but it is a 50 inch and it does general mowing, does the lawns extremely well. However, it has a bit of trouble down the back near my chickens where it's very undulating and there's lots of ditches. And that's where this comes in. A 46 inch Cub Cadet and this thing here, it goes over the bumps and it's much rougher and I can treat it bad and it still loves me. So this will go where that can't. And then this here will go in smaller places where this can't and it has another function. So this is a 30 inch electric Toro. It's not too bad as far as, I don't know much about electric mowers, but we've had a few hassles with it. Toro has fixed it up promptly and Sunshine Coast mowers up at Caloundra, they're a fantastic bunch. But apart from that, what I love about this thing is that it's quiet. I can tow a cart around without having to make a heck of a lot of noise. It's excellent actually for just doing everyday tasks. It's like a little mini golf buggy, driving that around, towing things, moving stuff. And then it will also get into these smaller areas where these other two bigger mowers won't or can't get into. And then I go down one more to this little Honda here. It's a pushy, it's not self-propelled, but as you, most of you would probably know, very versatile. But this is great just to tidy up around garden beds and tight spaces and even use it as a mini mulcher. Or sometimes I even use it to grab a bit of grass from around the vegetable garden and whack it into the composters just to get a bit of extra nitrogen going and to fire that composting process up. Whether you think I suck or blow, you can too with these essential machines. You only need one of them. This is a petrol blower and you could use it as a vac. I never use the vac. I do have the vac attachment, but you know, who wants to suck? And this one here is an electric Toro. Both are good. This doesn't last as long as this of course and you can really refuel this faster and it, I still use this as a backup but for smaller jobs this well and truly does a great job at blowing. If you've got a driveway or a lot of concrete around or even around these garden beds where I've laid down these recycled rubber matting it's so much faster than using a broom to broom things off and to tidy things up. Yeah I rate them as an essential tool to have in the garden. Blowers was 27 by the way. As you probably know, I garden on the edge because I'm an edgy guy. And that's why number 28 is edges. This is an electric edger. Doesn't do a bad job. Good for probably small pathways, small driveways, but it will overheat. So even if you've got a ton of batteries and keep throwing the batteries in there, the thing will stop on you. So my backup, is this fossil fuel operated Toro. And this is the wrong way around, but you get the idea, it's supposed to be on that side going that way. I like this because it'll run all day and also 
you don't have to bend over and break your back holding up this edger and pushing it along. You can rest on the top handles here and it makes edging pretty easy. I know a lot of guys use their whipper snipper to do the edging and I do that sometimes if it's a really easy edge. But what I've found is you just go through too much whipper snipper cord and it's just not viable. So yeah, I prefer to use a purpose made edger to edge our long driveways and pathways. What I always like to drill home in my videos is DIY and I would not be the man I am today without a drill and that's number 29. This drill here has helped me put together some of the most monstrosities you would ever see. I think out of all the shed tools that I have, this drill is probably the most useful one for the garden. Whether it's putting in lots of screws and even planting a few small plants in a garden bed with a mini auger, I think a drill is essential. Number 30, don't be dirty. Well, you can when you've got an auger. Why dig hard when you can dig easy? I tell you what, these posts behind me here, I don't know where I would have been without this fantastic machine. 10 years ago, yeah, I'd be digging holes by hand and taking all day. <laughs> this thing here, five minutes and you're down about 60 centimeters. It's really mind spinning just how much time this will save you. Number 31, chainsaw and pole saw. These things here, if you're a serious gardener, are essential because you really do need to keep your fruit trees under control. Here at the moment, our fruit trees are getting a little bit out of control and the way we control them is by giving them a good haircut. Sure, a hand saw does a great job, but if you've got a load of trees to go and you've got some maybe big ornamentals that you need to prune down heavily, you can't go past one of these. Of course, then you've got the firewood side of things. You can reuse all those big branches, such as mango tree branches, use them for smoking food. So you wanna chop that wood up nicely and then split it. And this is where a good chainsaw comes in handy. A pole saw is for those types of smaller jobs, yeah, but also the ones out of reach. Often I will use this little fella just to tidy up around the place. Get rid of those branches that are going in the wrong direction or in the wrong spot and just tidy up places where you just can't usually reach with a handsaw very easily. Saves you going up ladders, it makes life a lot easier. I don't necessarily endorse Ryobi, they don't sponsor me or anything like that. I'm happy if they did. You'll see that a lot of my battery powered stuff is Ryobi simply because it makes sense just to stick with the one brand so you're not having to use different batteries and different tools and just make a mess in your shed trying to recharge them all. Now that's a knife. 32 is a garden knife. Yes, such a thing. This one's from Hoselink. I work with them as you know and it has a serrated edge on one side and a, just a normal sharp edge on the other. And then it has a planting depth along the middle here. Very handy, you can use it as a trowel because it's curved. I just have mine in the garden. I mean, I suppose if someone attacked you, you could use it as well. It's just good for really little jobs. And I'll give you a prime example that I use it for all the time. And that's these dreaded banana shoots that keep coming up through this bed. We built this bed with banana waste in the base to save on soil fill. And because of that, you're getting these persistent shoots coming through. So the, what you do is you just keep cutting them back and eventually the banana waste that's in the bottom here will die off and it'll stop shooting and you will eventually win. But yeah, you'd be surprised on how often I do use it. And last, but certainly not least is number 33. One of my favorite all time tools in the garden and that's this old saucepan. If you've watched a number of my videos, you no doubt have seen me using this pot or saucepan mainly for fertilizer. I can mix it up with other ingredients like zeolites and humic acid, those types of things, and then spread them around the garden bed instead of carrying a big bag of fertilizer or wheelbarrow around. I don't know, it's just a really good way to reuse a saucepan that would have 
otherwise just being thrown into landfill. But that's not all. Check this out down here. Here's a little experiment I'm doing growing wasabi in pots underneath this mulberry tree. And there's reasons for it and I'll be doing a full video on growing wasabi. But the main thing is the mulberry tree loses its leaves through winter, which gives the wasabi plants enough sunlight. And then through summer, the mulberry tree obviously grows its leaves back and it shades it out through the hottest part of the year when otherwise in this climate, wasabi would surely die. But what I've also been experimenting with is down here. See how the plant here on the right is growing better than this plant here on the left? Well, that's because of extra water and that's extra water not seeping out through the pot. This one here doesn't have anything underneath it, but this one here has an old fry pan. Check it out. So what I've done is the drain hole is on the bottom of this terracotta pot. And I noticed that it was just draining through and seeping out and wasabi don't mind sitting in a little bit of extra water. It grows by streams in Japan. And so I had this idea that I might just trial putting it in this old saucepan instead of chucking it out. And it would act like a saucer and put the plant in it and that way the water wouldn't seep out or evaporate as fast and you can see it's working this plant is doing much better now than this one i'm sure i've missed a few tools but these 33 and it i know it did take a while were the best that i could think of however if you can think of any essential tools that you use that i didn't cover please whack them in the comment section below so that we can all learn from it and I might even add them to my list. Well, I hope you enjoyed the video. If you did, make sure you give it a big essential, it's essential that you give it a big thumbs up and share the video around and like that fly and also subscribe to the channel if you haven't already. Thanks a lot for watching. Bye for now. Cheers.